Zibu Zib. All right, so welcome to Doreen's African Experiences. I'm here to teach you how to grow plantains, what they need. Now, one thing you should know, Ugandan plantains are quite different from every country actually seems to have their own kind of plantains. So in Uganda, our plantains look like that. You know, you know, matoke. So we locally call them matoke. So this is, um, a, a family food plantain plantain garden so basically we here they grow plantains a regular food cassava some vegetables you know if you have land this is something that I would advise anybody to do every single person if they can they should do it you know so when you're planting plantains you basically dig a hole yeah so when you dig a hole, it should be about uh, uh, not less than two feet, you know, preferably maybe four feet, four, six feet, even bigger. But remember, the deeper the hole, it means it takes a bit longer for the little ones to sprout out. You see, like you can see right now, it takes a little bit longer for them to sprout or basically come out of the ground and also when it gives birth to the to the plantains themselves they are actually not too raised above the ground i'll show you how they look when the, the hole is big so these are what you plant the little ones so as you can see this this is a mama a mama plantain right it was harvested but it was already giving birth to these see she has about one two three four babies you know so i'm sure since the rain is here they'll cut them off right and then give each one of them an independent hole to start its own family so that's that's how you basically grow plantains you practically you know plant the babies i've seen cultures which can actually if the buds are coming out of this already they can cut off the buds separately and plant them sometimes they cover them fast now plantains are actually a water food they are water food you know this is a huge place this family you know they're friends of mine so they let me film uh they're doing this on on a family best level and then they have another farm they're doing it on a on a financial level as well now you have to take care of these plantains you see these these you have to trim these off you know you need to keep them neat look at this quite neat now different plantains have different stems yes this is a black stem and uh, this is plantains but then every stem looks different for every type of plantain if you focus closely you can identify them by their color they have different colors you know gonja has a different color um chivuvu has a different color finger bananas uh, the other big bananas they all have different colors of stems if you look closely you know now there isn't much to it there isn't much to growing these but you have to make sure they have water especially at a young stage they have to have water together they have to have water to soak our gulu Okay. Do you know this thing has over over about uh, 180 pieces, and they're still growing more. <laughs> and the spacing, the spacing has to be wide. The wider the spacing, the more it can give birth. You know, when I say give birth, I mean giving birth is basically the plantains, but also the babies are giving birth. So when they are spread out like this, if you look at the distance between these two, see that? That's appropriate. You know, it looks like four feet apart from each other, side by side, you know? And if you have fertilizers, you have to put them as well. Back when we were little growing up, I'll tell you something funny we used to do. It's not even funny, but it's healthy. Ash, 
you know when you're cooking in the in the kitchen that ash that ash can actually be sprinkled on them and it can cure them for what it can cure them for those um what would you call them diseases because they also have diseases just like any living thing you know they also have diseases so ash is a natural it's a natural pesticide ash and urine yes urine <laughs> i meant urine like real urine piece so how do you handle the urine situation if you're living in a local area you can piece in a container keep it covered for some time you know keep it covered for some time let's say three days three four days and then you can uh, sprinkle all over the what all over the plantains that's uh, growing and that too is a natural pesticide then fertilizers if you have animals like they do because they have cows they have goats they have chickens you know they have pigeons they have a lot of things going so basically those things are natural fertilizers as well but if you don't have access to any of those things you can basically go to your local shop that sells these things pesticide and what and then you ask for a safe one because remember these pesticides all have their own side effects because they are those that attract snakes they are those that you know different things if you have kids around look for a pesticide that does not attract things like that like snakes <laughs> I think this is a hub. You know, if you have a farm like that, you have to make sure that you spare the hubs. They harvested cassava today and I think they killed a snake. A snake? That's crazy. They killed a snake. Another thing I know or I learned last week about snakes, right? snakes if you injure a snake even a single wound and you can let it go because it will eventually die they i think they're not capable of healing themselves i know it's weird so we're sloping down and then i want to show you something else um one what you have to realize uh, ah moringa uh -huh. mm. moringa <laughs> this is the biggest moringa tree I've ever seen. That's crazy. Look at that. That's crazy. That's a huge one. You know, growing up we had one, but it never grew so big like that. That's huge. So this is a young version, and I think they're trying to maintain it and then transplant it to a safer place. But this is a very common way Zendi fine this today. Hmm. Nze nze wemba ntambula obugere mbunyiga kutaka eh. Hmm. Ogumiza. Ah. Wano babi kira wetoke. So the other thing yeah. Eh. Hey, if you have a uh, plantains and they fall due to strong winds and rains you can cover it from there from the ground you cover it with these dry leaves and then you wait for some time it, it can actually mature from there and then you add more soil at the edge now this i don't know what this is called in english but this is a plant that i also watched as a child growing up yeah <laughs> kanzija you see this plant every person in a local area that has a plantain you know place or a house or something they have this and its use is basically to take sap from your hands when you're peeling plantains you have sap that sticks on your hands so how does this work you pick a leaf you heat it up over fire and then you wipe your hands with it you know not too hot not not less than hot just really really warm it can take sap out of your hands that's that's basically what i know it's used for so i hope you're taking notes <laughs>
So if you come across it, please don't ingest it. I don't think it's safe for you. If I know it's a moon. Talk. I did not tell you to talk. It's almost. Mm. So see, this one is closed. It's almost ready. She's saying that they usually grow bigger than that. But I think the sun has hit all of us hard. You know, the past couple of two months, it's been hard for everyone. Ganamazi muga koze saaju. Ganamazi. Ente yegafuka. Eri wali mchisaka ato mkati. Yegafuka wano. Zipuka. Nkuba weto nyane gajia. Nkati wega genda ganyo wega. Nkati wega mutaka. Obo jimu. That's crazy. Eh, ujangwayo. Ah, ah. So this basically is peace. Cow peace. They created some kind of um, uh, system for it to come all the way here and then it gets into the soil. That's what I was telling you guys. You can have human peace, cow peace, goat peace. They are natural pests, pesticides in the ground, you know. And when you're planting your, your baby plant, your baby plantain plant, make sure it doesn't have any black spots in it. Yeah. Because black spots are a sign of disease in, in, the, in the plantain, you know. I'm going to try and look for one and show you. This oh is overly mature cassava. cassava. <laughs> <laughs> And these are actually highly marketable these days. These are food for cows, goats, pretty much anything. And these days they are so scarce. You know, it's some kind of elephant grass, I think. They love this and it's good for them. It's actually medicinal for them, you know. Uh -huh. That's how a uh, plantain looks when it's starting out. Any kind of plantains, they start out like that. See that? It keeps taking off one, one of those leaves, one by one, one by one. And then what, what's left actually starts swelling and growing big to become something like this. So it starts from there. You get? And that's the end of its life cycle. So once it gives birth like that, that's the end. It can't give birth again from the same plant. That's why they give birth to little ones like that. Like that one. You know? So these little ones carry on the whole thing, but that, that's where its life ends. You know, so when you're eating a plantain, remember to take care of the little ones because it's them that will give you more of this. Not the same big one. It's a process. <laughs> by the way, See, more plantains. I have to switch my batteries, they're running low. Ooh, let me switch my batteries. So this particular person has deep holes where their plantains are growing and that's how they look, similar to that. You know, you get the idea. They dig such extremely deep holes for them. So, and for those that have bunnies or rabbits and you have access to this plant, growing up, I think this was the favorite food for bunnies that I knew. This, this plant that has uh, 
very a yellow a yellow flower it's quite tiny but this is the favorite food for bunnies besides carrots of course it goes without say that that right there all right let's proceed with our video and they have plenty of this crazy and this is yellow yam yeah i think um i've never done a personal video on yellow yam but it's quite famous in west africa you know they have different names for it but this is it this is yellow yam so i think they're growing it out they're starting to grow it out you know they they molded for it and it goes really deep in the ground so I'm a bit worried about maybe because the trees were cut but the roots of the trees can intertwine with it and it can mess with it real bad but let's hope it doesn't get to that considering the bigger tree was cut ah, this is actually a huge plantain you know plantation it's crazy yams <laughs> by the way i love yams naesi manyi je na jam omanyi nti ni no mtu gwe manya ali mama yoni ku large scale na yeo msajja simu wangu simu wangu mm ebi sara ebi singo obuzi bo buliwo abasajja abasinga obo oyagala kola business na ye na yeo kukwana kwa bafukira okukwana kukola business na ye Naye bagalo kwana. Eh kitupo. Kale ne babikutamya. This is yams. Yes, the modern yams. By the way, in Uganda we have a certain type of yam. I don't know its scientific name, but they're very hard. But they're also very sweet. <laughs> so you need to have strong teeth to eat them. But yeah, these are yams. They have a mixture of everything in this place. They are growing pretty much anything. It's a big family, so. Basim Biech. Ah. So now they're doing mixed cropping. So every hole you see that's strange, it's a maize. They planted maize. And the rain is going on for two months. I'm actually saddened that I won't be able to, to grow this month anything really until next month because this was perfect. Perfect timing. Let me show you chickens. This is how local chickens behave. They feed themselves. You basically wake up and free them. And the mama runs around with her kids to eat anything. But they have predators. Look at her. She's wary. Who are these people? Look at her filming my kids. <laughs> but yeah, she walks around with her kids. It's kind of safe. It's very safe. So they feed themselves. You don't have to spend on food or nothing. And that they have the sweetest chicken meat ever. The only difference, I think why most foreigners don't like it, because they used to broil as that's too soft, you know, but they have no taste. Yeah, most of their food has no taste. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. And actually, growing up, I've never seen a single person medicating their local chickens. You actually, they can actually, as long as they don't mix with any sick chickens, with any sick chickens, that you don't have to medicate them. So that's why some of us are very strong. Because we grow up on no medication, nothing like that. You know, our food is 100%. Mm. This was too young, but neither mm. Lucha Sobolo could. A man and a Charlie Cravio. A man ever made a name we name it, Tammy Kuru one. You know? So I was still saying, growing up, we didn't even spray our food, you know, we never sprayed our food. And we always had heavy harvests. 
you know, groundnuts, name it. It was never sprayed. We never used to buy seeds from anywhere, you know. Mwogo? We magalo simba. Mwoge na teka moche chila. So this particular area, you know, all the way coming from, they look like maybe 20 decimals. 15, 20. They're going to grow maize, sorry, uh, cassava spaced out with um, ground nuts. Oh, Bean. With beans. <laughs> with beans. I am dreaming about the things I'm doing. You know? So yeah, that's plantains for you. You know? That's plantains for you. And you know what's funny? Growing up, I'm telling you, we never ate a single food that has any medicine in it. At least I'm speaking for me, you know. I can count the number of times I got sick since I was born. I mean, before I left, you know, my village life. I can count them. This is still the village life. But you know what I mean? When you're growing up, the village life is different. I remember I was only sick at least three times three times i'm serious three times and even of these three times only one was worthy of how do you call life threatening you know but these days kids get sick all the time the food is you know you have to spray we're doing farming but it's kind of miserable you know you have nothing to do if you don't spray for pests, if you don't spray for fertilizers, nothing is going to go and grow the way it is supposed to grow. You know, it's sad, but that's the life we're living in now. You know, they've gone ahead and messed with everything. They've messed with our seeds. They've messed with everything. You know, they're, they're selling to us modified seeds and you have no choice because if you look for the list of the modified See, it's not going to be competitive on the local market. Even the locals are not going to buy it. Zino mani chikach. Mani. Wazi kugavira za nadi. Nadi. Ah. Eneri mumia kemek. Ah, asu ni njinyo. Kati ya mia kandu ya sati. This is crazy. Do you know, do you see how short it is? But do you see how much it's put on? As a child, our coffee used to have branches and branches and branches before it even gave you this much. But it still had a lot of this. You know, it looks like Arabic coffee. You know, everything these days is modified. I mean, not as modified as it is in the Western world, but we're heading there. We're heading there, you know. We're heading there. We need to start and pre we need to start preserving some things that's just for us. You know, we we're so in love with big, bigger things, bi bigger foods, bigger this, bigger that. We're forgetting that what we had was not so big, but it was healthy. It didn't require so much money to do. You know. You know, somebody was telling me something today. Uh, I watch a bunch of YouTubers, you know. I follow so many of you, you know. But I'm telling you, there is something I learned today. Okoye. Today is a day. <laughs> like I was saying, right? So these YouTubers have points, strong points, you know? God Black was saying something. A lot of people that's coming from the Western world, you know, they have all this speech of don't do this to black people, or what the colonizers did to us, this and that. But when they come down here, they are not doing anything better. <laughs> and I heard him when he spoke that truth because people don't talk about these things, you know? A lot of people are coming down and doing exactly what the colonizers did. 
Oh my god. This is the biggest chicken I've ever seen. What the hell? Aliachono. Jesus Christ. This is a huge cork. I mean, okay, that came out wrong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> this is a rosemary's. Ah. Rosemary. Rosemary is good for you, especially women. Um, I was still saying, I don't like going in details about this, but I've seen so many people, so many of these people that's not growing up in Africa, that's coming down to Africa, name any country, any country, you know, they go down here, they come down here. I know Africans. <laughs> I, I'm not saying Africans that's in Africa are any better, you know, because some of the best people I've met are people that didn't grow up here in Africa. You know, some people are cultured, at least they have some manners, but I'm also telling you that the biggest percentage of these people that's crawling back to Africa, they're coming and preaching one thing, but doing exactly what they're preaching. You know, they're doing the complete opposites of what they're preaching. You know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, they say that the longer you stay in a place that fucks with you, the more you get fucked yourself, which means you lose a piece of yourself to this, to these, to the places, and you don't even know it. You don't even know that you've lost a piece of yourself to these places, to these people but you actually have you know the, one of the biggest problems we have in Africa right now is tribalism whether people believe it or not it's been our longest standing problem you know with all these tribes I am of this tribe you know these are palm trees Look at them, they look nice. They make the compound look very nice. Quite nice, you know? You know, to this day, every, every single country in Africa has more than 10 tribes. You know, maybe not 10, but at least five. More than five. And every tribe comes with its own language. These people will have to identify you by what language are you speaking? You don't speak my language, so, but we're all black. We've forgotten to understand that at the core, we're all black. You know? I'm from the north, I'm from the east, I'm from the south. It's okay. I'm from the south. It doesn't matter. You know? We lost ourselves so much, and this started from our ancestors. You know? This is something that's been passed down generation after generation. We think that some tribes are better than other tribes. And some people, because they have, um, they, they meet one person from one tribe that does something to them, they'll generalize and say, every single person from the West is bad. Every single person from the Central is bad. You know, because they've had a bad experience with one person. But isn't it high time we started to judge people individually based on their moral authority, their actions, you know, based on who they are. You listen to Martin Luther King's speeches. These are the same problems. You know, they may be down to tribalism, but they're also not any different from racism. The racism between black and white. Black people, we're doing that to ourselves every day, you know, based on tribal futures, you know. This tribe has a long nose, or oh, this tribe doesn't have a long one. This tribe looks like this. We're different. We're not different. We're black. And as soon as you identify as black, because now we have black people identifying as white, and white people identifying as black. So we have to also accommodate them. <laughs> We need to understand that a lot of things are quite different. Very, very different. 
you know so let's get back to the food I don't, i'm not here to preach to anybody i don't like preaching but i'm, I'm just saying growing up things we didn't need to do we have to do now for our own survival and people let's judge less you know the world and life is harder enough as it is right now on anybody you know you sitting there all high and mighty judging every single person forgetting you also have shit about your life you don't want to disclose you know you have chapters in your life that you wouldn't want them read out loud but you're the one that's doing all the judging like you are better than every single person out there anyway thanks for watching this was Doreen's African Experiences. Subscribe, like, and share. As I say, we learn every day. I hope you learn something, no matter how small. Okay? Enjoy your day, your night, your afternoon, your evening, whichever time it is, wherever you are. I hope you have a beautiful one.